Can this replace this? Yes, it's a handheld welder. Now this is not a sponsored video. This is just a unique enough product that I figured it deserved a video of its own. It does come with a nice little carrying case. And if you know me by now, I don't even pull out the face mask or the wire toothbrush. There's a whole bunch of brands out there that actually make handheld welders. This one is Xcort, unlike the Escort I had in high school. Oh, dude, sweet. The machine itself is all plastic. I mean, well, that's probably what you want out of a handheld machine. Can you imagine if this were a big old metal casing or an AC transformer type? Let's just say there's a reason why they came out with these after the inverter welders started coming out. Definitely made in China along with the instructions. Turning direction control switch? Turning directions? Is this a drill? No, it's not a drill. It's a good welder with a good heart. I'll admit I was fully skeptical of this even throwing a spark. I mean, come on, I know inverter technology is small, but really small enough to hold in the palm of your hand? And this thing only weighs like two and a half, three pounds max. Now I've had some transistors in an inverter welder blow before, and it's loud. I need these tiny little electronics. It makes a big pop. Now, it's one thing when you are five to 10 feet away because your machine's off to the side, and it's another thing when it's just a foot away from your head. Aside from being a completely different machine and product from a regular stick welder, the actual welding of it does take some getting to used to holding it in your hand. And another thing, you gotta remember to pull the trigger. The first couple times I actually thought that it was broken, something wasn't hooked up right. You know, just typically stick welders, you just plug it in and you're hot. Now I did not opt for the semi-automatic version. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it is just as simple as plugging it in and really setting your ground clamp. You may notice this is a magnetic clamp. Yes, I did switch it out. I picked one of those up and it worked out great because the ground clamp that came with this was probably the cheapest thing I've had. Look at that, you can't even open up the jaws without it bending over. It also claims that the ground clamp is brass. <laughs> Despite that it says it can do continuous welding all day, I can't imagine the duty cycles being that high for this thing, nor would you want to weld with it all day. And don't forget to use that turning direction control switch knob, which it's this knob up on here, at least that's what they point to it, and all you do is you push it in and it holds your electrode. So no turning of any directions other than pushing down. But hey, it actually does have a pretty good bite. So it's in there pretty good. Claims it can hold up to a 3.2 millimeter, which I'm sure everybody knows right offhand. It's an eighth inch rod and yes, it can uh, hold an eighth inch just fine. Not that it can go up that high to use an eighth inch, but it holds it. After the first couple times of stepping back while turning it on, I put a little more trust in it, but I still started out low. The amperage output is all done with this little dial with a scale of one to six, uh, but it can't really get all the way around to six, so it's about five and a half. I had some 1 16th inch rods and I tried it out on number one setting. It did take a couple strikes to actually get it and I, it just made some, a little spatter ball mess with the one setting, so I upped it to number two and ran that with a 16th inch rod as well. Moved up to number three on the settings and bumped it up to a 3 32nd inch rod. The issue with this was, which even though I did have my amp meter hooked up, I couldn't actually look over and see what the amperage was reading, and it was definitely on the lower end. I had a really hard time starting that um, 3 32nd inch rod, especially since it was 7018, which typically you run a little hotter. So I bumped it up to about three and a half, was able just to barely get the weld going, but let's just say 332nd, 7018 did a lot better on the number four setting. The last move was to test out the eighth inch rod. And so I maxed out the machine at the five and a half setting and I couldn't get it to strike. I 
Then notice that yes, the settings or the amperage is a lot lower than what they claim. It does not get up close to 120. So to test it out on the max, I tried a new 332nd inch rod and it worked just great on that rod. I'll mention it again, or maybe I haven't mentioned it yet. Don't forget to pull the trigger. But once I did find the settings, I mean, hey, it started and actually ran a fairly nice bead. I did have the amp meter hooked up for those tests, and so just so then you know what the scale is or range that correlates with the amperage, I'll list it down below. One of the hardest things with stick welding is actually striking an arc. It does take practice, and even more so with a handheld welder. As you can imagine, well, I don't know if you can see it very well or if it's even in focus, but I am trying to hold my hand as steady as possible, and there's quite a bit of movement down here at the end. Uh, yes, you can. You'll see that I was able to hold it, but I mean, this is just a really awkward position. Another issue I've realized is, well, this is an all-in-one machine. It's great compact, but, well, your leads, these ones at least are only five feet, that's all you get. So a typical machine you would, you know, put on your table or over on the bench, run the power to there, and then you have five to ten feet to work with. Well, here, they only give you five feet to the power cord, so you can't just, you know, haul it over there. So, I mean, I've got, you know, a heavy-duty extension cord. Let's get down to brass tacks here, okay? To be perfectly honest, I'm going to keep the machine, but it's not going to be my go-to. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's not, okay? Unless maybe you only had a big old tombstone buzz box. Woo! And just for portability, you, you whip this thing out just for the quick little welds. Hey, that might work for those instances. Now, yes, I still am a little nervous that, you know, with it being that close to my face. Glad it didn't blow up this time. That's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.